The following episode of Planet Now contains information that our guest uses to alleviate symptoms of a genetic disease. Remember, this is one person's story, one person's journey. Before applying anything new to treat medical symptoms or a disease, do your own research. Work with your doctor to find the best course of action for your situation. Nothing contained in this episode should be used in place of a doctor's advice. Hey there, and welcome to Planet Now, where it's all about the people, places, things, and ideas that teach us, prompt us to make a difference, and do more with what life presents. Now, it's hard to believe it's already September. The year is on the downswing and the holiday season is on the way. You know, I'm not trying to be like the Christmas trees popping up in stores right now way, way too early. But let's not rush ahead of ourselves. September is Sickle Cell Awareness Month, and my guest today has a compelling story about how she learned about the disease. Elle Cole is a writer, and she's also founder of CleverlyChanging.com. It's a lifestyle blog that focuses on holistic empowerment. And when you visit the website, you'll see the goal right there. It's, quote, empowering the total person. Now, Elle and her husband have two daughters, twins, and one of them has sickle cell disease. Now, we met up to talk during the last week of operations at a local bakery and cafe in Tacoma Park, Maryland. So some of the ambient noise you hear is basically what was going on inside the cafe and the bakery, just the ambient sounds of the place. Now, take a listen to Elle Cole and her journey and her family's journey with sickle cell disease. So when my husband and I were expecting, in our third trimester, we found out that both of us were carriers of the sickle cell trait, which means that we had a 25% chance of having a child that had sickle cell disease. There are different types of sickle cell disease, but we knew that if they inherited a gene from us, it could be SS. So we were able to test beforehand or some people decide to test afterwards. So for us, we found out her diagnosis was confirmed three months after she was born. So I actually have twins. I have two children. One has the sickle cell trait, and the other, she inherited both of the sickle cell traits from both of her parents. And so she has full-blown sickle cell anemia. Because I have twins, I want to explain that The reason why they both don't have sickle cell disease or both have the trait or both don't have anything is because they are fraternal twins. So when you have fraternal twins, they have their own sacs and they have separate genetics. So their own DNA, they're completely different, two different children that just shared the womb at the same time. And so sickle cell awareness became something that just kind of took over our lives, so to speak. Somewhat because when you have sickle cell, it doesn't just affect one area of your body. It affects everything. And for those who have it very severely, it can shut down organs. It can be fatal for some people. It's just about learning how to take care of yourself. And for us, we're teaching our child, who's now nine years old, how to take care of herself. And that's really how we combat the disease. And we are fighting every day for a more universal cure. There is a cure that exists, and that's a bone marrow transplant. When a person gets a bone marrow transplant, that means the bone marrow in their body that creates the marrow is actually replaced. And it The doctors replace it with someone who isn't going to make sickle cell bone marrow. So here's the thing. With sickle cell, it means that the person's red blood cells are shaped like a banana and not shaped around like a donut. So for those of us who don't have sickle cell, it simply means that for most of us, for the most part, it means that our red blood cells are circular, and so they can pass through our body fairly easily. For people with sickle cell, they get stuck, and that is actually called a crisis. And so when they get stuck and they can't move and flow, we need our blood for oxygen. We need it for everything, really, to think, to breathe, to do everything. And so when you have a problem, like a blockage or a stoppage, then you aren't getting the proper oxygen that you need, and that's going to cause some issues in your life. And so that is why 
trying to come up with a way to make this disease better is so important. So for people who have it, when they have that stoppage, it causes immense pain. And because I've seen my daughter in crisis once, that pain is more unbearable than anything I have ever seen before. It definitely was worse than me going through childbirth. To see that, especially in a child so young, it's it's heartbreaking. So you said you saw her in crisis one time. Has she only been in crisis one time? She's only had one crisis. Um, There are instances where you can tell when a person could be going into crisis. So she has had those experiences where, like, her back will hurt, and she'll say, Mommy, Mommy, my back is hurting, and it won't stop. Well, I know at that very moment that her blood cells are starting to stick together. And so for me... We just start acting fast, and acting fast for us means we start giving her lots and lots of fluids because fluids have oxygen, and they can help push that red blood cell along. They can help push the blood cells along. So we give her a lot of fluids. I also give her an herbal supplement to help produce more red blood cells to help her so that she's able to just her body can circulate more. I massage the area, and I distract her. So... Because I, she's a kid, and no kid wants to sit there and drink water for hours. So I'll usually put on a movie that she's very interested in, and I just you know, tell her, drink this, drink this, and it tends to work for us. So she's only had one major crisis, and with the minor issues where she's had a part of her body hurting, for her it's usually her back. We've been able to avoid a crisis by giving her more fluids. We also have given her Motrin, so the doctor will recommend Motrin. So we'll give her Motrin, we'll give her the fluids, we'll encourage her to rest, and we'll massage the area. We also, on occasions, will do a heating pad, so that's pretty much what we do to make sure we get ahead of the situation. The way the crisis will manifest itself is different for each person. Just like any disease manifests itself in a different manner, the way that a crisis will begin or the way that the indicators of a coming crisis will be different from from person to person. Right, and I think that's one of the things that's most challenging for healthcare workers and medical professionals because for everybody is different. Earlier I mentioned that there were different types of sickle cell, and so even with the different types, you have variations. So they say SS is actually the worst type more common types are SC and also beta thalassemia. And so for people who have those, it can manifest completely different than in someone who has sickle cell anemia, which is SS. So for SS, which is what my daughter has, for her so far, it hasn't been terrible. So when she was a baby, I never had to go to the ER. I never had to deal with any of those issues. But that is rare. It's not common. I have talked to people who are healthy, so we believe in a healthy lifestyle. She's been vegetarian since birth, and we believe in making health a lifestyle for us. And I've met other people who also have made those lifestyle changes, and their kid hasn't necessarily fared as well as mine. So um, the things that I do, I know it's not one particular way to handle the situation, and I'm just sharing what works for us and what works for my daughter. And one of the things on your blog, cleverlychanging.com, is empowering the total person, and part of empowerment seems to be, you know, knowing and understanding your particular situation and what would work. So what's a tip that you have for a person who is trying to figure this out? Well, what works for my child? I'm, I'm not quite sure. They, maybe they're scared. Maybe they're overwhelmed. So for us, I believe it's very important to have a a health journal. I can't really express that enough. Write down, talk to your kids, write down what's going on from day to day. And I know that if you're not a writer, clearly (laughs) I like to write, so it's not a chore for me. But I think it's important because when you visit the doctor, you will have concrete information about what's going on. You'll also be able to look back and see if there's certain differences that you're experiencing. For instance, what I noticed when my daughter had that first crisis, I knew exactly what had happened, what changes that took place in her environment that made her more susceptible. So for us, it was the coldest day of the year here in Maryland. And she, we were, I was rushing to a homeschool class at the Maryland Science Center. And we were in the car and I couldn't, I was having some trouble with my car and I couldn't figure it out. And so even though she had on a big thick coat and everything, 
um, that cold weather just, it caused her to go into crisis. One of the things that the literature will tell you is to avoid extremes. So you have to avoid very cold weather and very hot weather. And when you're exposed to that, even in the, the winter, you have to make sure you're getting fluids. Dehydration is real. For sickle cell patients, it could be fatal. But for us, I think many people struggle with getting the proper hydration. And so making sure that you're getting fluids, even for yourself, is very important. And so for me, having a child with these special needs, I'm forced to be aware of things I need to do and take care of myself. Uh, Because children also model what they see you do. Not what you say, but what you do. That's right. So our, you know, we can tell our children a lot of things, but our example is the best teacher. And I mentioned earlier that, you know, my daughter is home with me throughout the day because I homeschool. And so I'm really on all day. So she's paying attention to everything I'm doing. And so I have to be very aware and very cognizant of how I behave and how, you know, just my habits. And so it's constant self-reflection. And so with the journal, it gives you an opportunity to also self-reflect. So you, you're able to see, okay, so this is what I serve for dinner. Hmm, maybe this wasn't the best for my family, not even the best for me. And so it really causes you to kind of see on paper and take an objective view. So keeping a journal and being self-reflective, it's not a thing about making yourself feel guilty and, you know, beating yourself over the head. It's just making sure you're doing the best. Right. It's just being aware, knowing what you do. And I think that sometimes we do stuff because maybe our parents did it. And we do things without even thinking of it. When you write it down, it's just eye-opening. So if you need your eyes to be open, it's no guilt, no judgment. It's just, what am I doing? So that you can actually see, you know, well, like when we have a job, we'll often, you know, write things down for our employers or for other people because that's a part of our job. But sometimes we have to take our lives with that same sort of care and write things down so that we can be attentive. Let's talk about the difference between sickle cell disease and sickle cell trait. More of the cells, of course, are shaped like bananas with sickle cell disease, but sickle cell trait is just a little bit different. So sickle cell trait means that half of your blood, not all of it, is sickled. So for, for people who are aware that they have the trait, and if you are not aware, I definitely encourage you to talk to your primary care physician and get tested. Because it's important to be aware. Um, My personal story is that when I, after I graduated from college, I went to Denver. Denver is a mile high city. And I was having a lot of health issues that I had never had before. And I didn't know. So even then, I did not know I had a problem that was actually manifesting. But I didn't even know why it was manifesting. But what I learned is that even with the trait, you can have certain complications at times. And one of those complications for me is when I was at a high elevation, I I had shortness of breath. um, I would get tired easily after exercise. And so you have, again, you know, we talked about empowering the turtle person. You have to know yourself. And I think that's really what our journey is. You have to know what's going on with your body. So it's okay to get tested. It's not something that's shameful. It's just saying, this is how my body is. And some, I don't know if, you know, they have some theories that say that the sickle cell trait was created by a mutation, a gene mutation, to help us combat malaria. So when we come from areas where malaria is high, the sickle cell trait is going to help people fight that disease even more because your body is going to sickle and it's going to stop that um, trait. But you don't want to have all your blood sickling. You know, so it's not really something that you should be alarmed about. Just be aware of it and make sure that you're, you're getting enough fluid. So for me, when I talked about being in Denver, I wasn't getting enough fluids like I was supposed to. And that's why I started having those health complications because my body was dehydrated. I had to learn how to make myself drink plenty of water all throughout the day, not just in the morning, not just at night, but throughout the day. What are some of the health issues that you, that you saw? You, you know, you said shortness of breath. And what are some of the, the other ones that you experienced? So when I would exercise, I just fatigue. 
I would get tired. Just, and it was like, like an odd type of tired. Right, right. It was an odd tired where I just would need to rest. I would go to the doctor and they were listening. They were like, well, none of these things even come into play with you. Because I'm a very, I'm, you know, I believe in health. I believe in taking care of myself. So the doctors didn't know. And I didn't even know to tell them to test for the trait because I just was oblivious to it. I didn't know, didn't have any sort of thought process that even surrounded that. And so this is one of the things that I want other people to know because it can affect you. Each year I try to do 30 for sickle cell, which I, where I share 30 days in the month of September that are all related to sickle cell. And one interview that I did, the woman who was interviewed, she talked about how having the trait caused her to have a very painful um, and difficult childbirth. So in my experience, I didn't. I had twins, and it wasn't so difficult surrounding that, but I only carried them 35 weeks and six days, which to me is fairly good when you have multiples, but maybe it could have been longer. Um, I don't know. But So it can affect your childbirth. It can affect other things. But you, here's the thing. You have to be aware of it. You have to make sure you're getting plenty of fluids and eating healthy. Okay. Are you going to be doing the 34 sickle cell this year? Yes. I try to do it as much as I can. It it is a big commitment. So if you're someone who wants to contribute, um, I definitely will um, give a link so that you can contribute your story. It's basically I have interview questions and I ask you some questions and you go ahead and answer and I share it with my audience. Let's talk about you teaching your daughter how her body works. And, of course, part of it is, you know, you model already the habits that that you want her to pick up. Now, how do you teach her how her body works in such a way where she doesn't think she's less than? Or, you know, we're all different from each other. But sometimes the words that we speak and the tone that that we use can convey certain things. So how are you, how do you make sure you teach her in such a way that, you know, this is just how it is? And it's not like a bad thing, but this is, this is your reality. The first thing I do, I teach her how to partner with her health care providers. I think for me, that's kind of like the easiest step that I can do in terms of her being able to know which questions to ask her doctors. Because when I became an adult, it was like, oh, you know, you, you, you really have to know what to say to your doctors. Are the visits going to be very quick and you're not going to get anything solved? And so for her to be able to know how to communicate and even to know, you know, what, to, what questions to ask, what to share, I make sure that she partners with me so I can say, you know, um, do you have any health concerns? When we go to the doctor, I encourage her health care providers to talk to her directly. I'm not her liaison all the time when we go into the doctor. I definitely i am there, I'm present because she's a minor, but she can speak for herself. And I want her to know that it's okay to talk to your doctor. They've been trained, but you are always with you. And so you have to train yourself in order to know how to better care for yourself. While your doctor has some training, you're going to be the the expert on you. That's the first thing that I do to make a difference and to kind of show her how to take care of herself. The second thing that I do um, to not make her feel weird or ostracized or even different, the thing is I don't make differences negative. Because differences are good. We live in a diverse world and we see differences all around us. Differences should be celebrated. And by me raising awareness of sickle cell, I think there's an aspect of pride that she takes in knowing my mom cares so much about me and so much about what's going on with my body, she's willing to talk to other people about it. And so while she hasn't necessarily joined me yet in my advocacy, I would love for her to do that one day. I'm showing her that it's something that she can take ownership of and be okay with. Because I think it's, it's all about learning how to um, take care of yourself and empower others. And so I'm trying to model that for her. And for her sister, who is a twin, I try not to make it seem like, you know, put all my attention and focus on 
my daughter who has sickle cell. As a family, there are things that we do to be healthy, and that's what we all do. So when she has to drink several glasses of water, we all do. It's not just her. And we all do because really taking care of yourself are underlying principles for for every person. It's not just because she has sickle cell. So these are just rules that she's learned since birth. So it's not something that we just brung on her. It's something that is a lifestyle for her. This is how she's always lived. So by teaching her as a young person to do it, I'm hoping that that will carry on into her habits as an adult. So the 34 for sickle cell, where can people go to contribute? My blog is cleverlychanging.com, and there is a link at the top, the top header that says sickle cell. If you click on that link, you'll see how to contribute, and um, there will be a Google form that you can fill out in order to contribute. And if you want to read other articles, if you want to tweet, if you want to um, share it on Instagram, the hashtag that I use is hashtag 3030 the word for F-O-R sickle cell, 34 sickle cell is the hashtag. So I encourage you to um, follow the hashtag, learn more about sickle cell. That's Elle Cole, writer and founder of cleverlychanging.com. Now, Elle knows the sickle cell disease journey as a parent. One of her fraternal twin daughters has the disease. Now, one thing about Sickle Cell Awareness Month, yes, it's a time to discuss facts about the disease, about the trait, about how it's inherited, about symptoms and treatments. But awareness could also be a way for folks to see one another. There could be someone familiar to you who is suffering in silence. Maybe they have a family member with the disease or a friend or a neighbor. You just never know how sickle cell disease is affecting the life of someone around you. Maybe the person has the trait. I don't have the disease, but I do have the trait. And after talking with Elle, you know, I'm looking back on some experiences that I've had in my life, even though people with the trait can go throughout life, you know, without having any serious symptoms uh, because they have the trait or any serious symptoms behind the trait. I have had a couple of experiences that I thought might be a little bit odd, but looking back, I'm wondering if I had those experiences or those symptoms because of the trait. I never really thought I needed to know anything about sickle cell trait other than the fact that my mom warned me, you know, when you date, make sure, whoever it is, if it gets serious, make sure you ask the person whether or not they have the trait, especially if you're thinking about, you know, getting married, settling down, having kids, make sure you ask them whether or not they have the trait. That's pretty much all I thought I needed to know about sickle cell trait. But now I'm reading and learning more, which I'm guessing is one of the goals of Sickle Cell Awareness Month. More with L. Cole of cleverlychanging.com, her family's journey with sickle cell disease. It's something that people all around us are experiencing and we may not know. Because the thing about sickle cell is not visible, it's not a visible challenge. So you, you may not know that the person, even your family members, you may not know that they have it, but um, it is prevalent in our communities. It's something that we should be talking more about. It should be a dinner table discussion. So definitely, if you know, you're interested in learning more, visit the hashtag, share it with others so that they can learn more because chances are that they've definitely encountered somebody who has the disease. We've been talking about modeling for both of your children, healthy lifestyles, and principles and things that they both can use and take with them into adulthood. Now, one of the things I read on your blog is about transition care. So now, of course, you're teaching your daughter to care for herself, and you know, you're letting her advocate for herself while at the doctor. Gone are the days of children should be seen and not heard. We're not doing that. Right. <laughs> but one day, as with all human beings and living things in life. Parents will ease out of their children's lives. One day, the elders won't be there anymore. So what is the difference between what you're going to teach her as she eases into adulthood and the differences between maybe what she's dealing with now as opposed to what she might deal with later on? So transition care is actually a term that is commonly used to refer to when the sickle cell patient transitions from pediatric care into an adult care. So they'll no longer have their pediatrician. 
they'll probably get a new hematologist, and so they'll probably have new healthcare workers who don't know the history that their pediatric doctor knew of. And so, unfortunately, as things have manifest with sickle cell, people sometimes get a lot sicker and the disease gets worse as they're an adult because their body has been fighting to maintain its level of health throughout their life. And after a while, that could start changing. When we go through puberty, it can affect sickle cell. There will be changes because all of the hormonal changes. It's a whole different ballgame when a person becomes an adult, when they even become a teenager. The disease changes. What I am teaching her now is just really life principles But when she gets to be a teenager and she goes through puberty and she starts going through that um, process of transitioning, then she's going to have to really take things into her own hands, but she's going to have to know how to vet her, her doctors to make sure that they understand the disease. Not too many specialists have decided to focus on it. What we need, we need more hematologists that are dealing with adult sickle cell patients. In the past, people often died before they reached adulthood, and so there are some people who did not specialize in it because they didn't want to for whatever reason, but because sickle cell patients are living longer and into adulthood, there is a greater need for more hematologists that specialize just in sickle cell patients. We have some healthcare providers who don't even know what sickle cell is. If you have a healthcare provider who asks, how long have you had sickle cell, then you automatically know it's time to change. Birth. (laughs) Right. Because it's a disease that you're born with. It's not something that you can catch. It's not contagious. It's not something that is anything like that. So if someone doesn't understand that your parents gave this to you when they, you know, created you and it's a part of your chromosomes, it's a part of your genetic makeup, then it's time to move on because that person can't treat you the best that you may need because they don't have that full understanding. So you want someone who has that full understanding. When I'm talking to my daughter, when she sees me interact with the doctors, those are questions that she may, you know, hear or she may hear us discussing. We've been fortunate that she's had incredible doctors who were very well versed in the disease. And we have doctors who are willing to work with us and who often we make decisions together. And so I'm encouraging her to find a doctor that she can make decisions with and programs. So there are programs that are opening up throughout the country. St. Jude is one of the hospitals who has a sickle cell unit where they specialize in research for sickle cell patients. And so there are other hospitals across the country who are just honing in and trying to find cures. When I mentioned earlier that we're looking for a more universal cure, it's because Bone marrow transplants have to be, right now, they have to be really good matches in order for them to work. And a good match, a great match, would be someone who is your sibling. So even a parent isn't going to be a great match because your parent has different genetic makeup. Their mom and dad are different from your mom and dad. And so the best match would be a sibling who doesn't have the disease or the trait. The next best match, you know, would be a parent. So they can do a partial match now. They have some stem cell research that they're doing, like, you know, saving cord blood from, you know, if you had a sibling that had cord blood. One of the, I can't think of the name of the company that allows sickle cell um, patients to actually get a free um, cord blood registry. They can sign up for the registry for free and have their their um, cord blood saved for free if they have a sibling with um, sickle cell. It's one of the companies out there. I can't recall which one at this time, but that is something that exists because stem cell transplants are available for people to get. Now, when people get them, it doesn't mean they're free and clear to, you know, walk life normally. It means that they probably have to take medication to constantly make sure um, that the transplant, whatever was done, stays that way. 
So it's more of main, maintenance. You probably have to take medication for maintenance. Let's go from there to advocacy work. Now, it sounds like your advocacy work started the moment you found out that your daughter had sickle cell. So that starts with research. You're finding out. You're learning more. Um, you're teaching your daughter how to advocate for herself. 30 for sickle cell. That's another way to advocate for, um, for more research, more treatment, and just more awareness. What are some other things that you are doing and have done to uh, raise awareness and to get this conversation, as you say, around the dinner table? You know, I feel like it's a life's work now that I have a daughter who has sickle cell. And so I'm in the Maryland area, and Howard University Hospital actually also has a sickle cell unit um, in their hospital. And every year they do a symposium where they talk about sickle cell. Two years ago, they talked about sickle cell trait, where they focused on the trait and how to take care of yourself and certain things to look for. Um, so I tried to attend those type of events. The Worldwide Association for Sickle Cell is the Sickle Cell Disease Association of America. It really helps promote awareness around the world, not just here in America, but it's the largest um, association, and every year they have a conference. And so I encourage people to attend these events, because if we want to have more events that educate us, that empower us, that empower our community, then we have to attend them. And so on my blog, I try to, you know, I'll try to retweet people. I'll try to share events that are related to sickle cell. Usually, in almost every state here in America, there is probably a sickle cell disease association. They are generally um, separated by the state. And then you have that one large association, which is the Sickle Cell Disease Association, that's really the, the head of it, and they often help to fund the other um, state-ran organizations. And usually they're ran by nonprofits and not the state themselves. Um, but it's definitely something to look into. If you're interested in doing um, advocacy work of, on your own, find the Sickle Cell Disease Association partner nonprofit in your state find it and, you know, find out when they're having meetings. They usually have walks. So I've attended several walks in the past and they have blood drives because a lot of people with sickle cell, they have to get blood transfusions regularly. And so we need more people, especially people who share the same background. For instance, if you're a person of color, regardless of which color you are, even there's a variety of different types of sickle cells. So whatever your genetic makeup, you need to give blood if you can. By giving blood, you can be giving back. And so I try to, um, I try to do what I can. For me, so I can give blood for other people, but the blood that I give isn't going to go towards someone who has sickle cell because I have the trait. And they really want blood for people who don't have the trait. But your blood, if you, if you have the trait, definitely give blood because they can use it for other things. But also give blood if you don't have the trait because people need it. They need a lot of it, too. Hey there, you're listening to Planet Now and today's conversation with L. Cole of CleverlyChanging.com, a lifestyle blog that focuses on the empowerment of the total person, the whole person. Cleverly Changing. Hmm, I love that blog name. So you know I had to ask. How did you come up with the name Cleverly Changing? My kids were two. They were almost two. I was still nursing all day. And I just felt like I was being pulled in every direction. I said the only thing that's the same about parenting is that it changes. It's constantly changing. I wanted to be clever as I changed. So it was really like a, a natural progression, cleverly changing. It's really about my path of learning, of experiencing, and sharing my experiences with others. And so that's why I call it Cleverly Changing. I have a variety of passions that you'll find out if you visit my blog. I don't only talk about health advocacy. I talk about a variety of different things. Just any information that I find that could help somebody else, that's what I share. That's really where Cleverly Changing was born. Just looking through your blog, it seems like you want to inspire folks to not let the changes wash over you and take you away, but 
you can be smart about it, you can be savvy about it, and you can, you can go with the flow in a clever way. Right. I think my goal is that you embrace you. Embrace whatever obstacles you may have to face. Embrace your gifts embrace whatever circumstances you're in. And I think that's really what I talk about. I talk about finding a way to embrace my life, and I share those experiences with other people because I truly believe that the things that you face and the things that you experience aren't just for you. I feel like they are for you to share with other people and help them learn how to cope. And it helps you by helping others, you help yourself. That's a common (laughs) saying that we've often heard, but it's true. When you help other people, you you help yourself. And for me, when I found out my daughter had this diagnosis, it was difficult. I remember bringing her home and having two babies, and I remember thinking, how am I going to be able to, to deal with this? How am I going to be able to live? And I didn't have a large community of people that I could go to, that I could talk to. I had to create my own, and that's essentially what I did with Cleverly Changing. I created a community of people who have your best interest in mind. And so whatever way we can assist you and help you, if you have questions, definitely in in a post on my blog, leave a comment, send me a tweet, send me a message on Instagram. You know, you can direct message me wherever you may have a challenge. If I don't know the answer, I'm going to find somebody who does. I've been blessed where I have a large community of people who are willing to, to help, to, you know, share their expertise, because we're not going to be experts in everything, but we definitely can learn from each other if we share it. If people don't know you need to know a certain thing, they won't be able to help you. So you have to kind of share your experience, share your questions, and I've just created a community where people can do that with no judgment, with, with love, and so that's what Cleverly Changing is all about. Crowdfunding, just with information. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Essentially, that's what it is. And so um, from time to time, I will say from time to time, you will see sponsored posts on my blog because, you know, taking care of a child, I, I, left the, I left corporate America to take care of my child. And so a lot of the information I definitely always share from the heart. And I will say if something is sponsored, but I do take on, um, it is a way of income for me. It is my, my profession now, my career. And so it's something that I take seriously. Seriously, and so I want people to be able to to know that up front that you know while I am sharing information, it's not all volunteer. The one thing that really struck me about you when we first met at the karaoke event was the fact that you were sharing all of your information. I did not sense one hint of why me, one hint of bitterness because you know how folks can be bitter. Folks can be bitter. They can. And I didn't just sense any of that. But at the same time, you don't deny the difficulties of the journey. So what keeps you positive? I think it's very important to be honest with yourself. I think that's what has resonated with my audience. I've been sharing my story for eight years. For me to open myself up and share myself with really (laughs) the world You know, because anybody can access that information. And for me to be willing to share that and be transparent, you have to be honest. Is every day easy? No. With my goal to be healthy, does it mean that my daughter hasn't had obstacles, that she doesn't have things to overcome? No, it doesn't mean that. It just means that we're on a journey together to make her quality of life better. I'm not bitter about it because it's definitely given my life a greater sense of purpose And I can't deny that. It's something that is real. Sometimes, I I mentioned when we talked about journaling, that being objective. And so for me, writing and sharing, I've been able to kind of look at my life from an outside perspective and say, wow, you know, things could be different, but aren't you blessed? Because there are so many parents who don't have their child. There's so many kids who didn't live past toddler age. And so I'm just so, I'm so blessed that I have an intelligent child who thinks the world of me and who, you know, supports what I do. A lot of the pictures that you will see of me on my blog, she actually took them. 
<laughs> so that's something that people don't know. My, <laughs> my photographer is my kids. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but she has gifts, and I learned so much about just life from her. She gives me a zeal for life that I didn't have prior to having her. And so I'm just so thankful, and I can't deny that. I just have so much to, you know, it gives me a, a desire to learn more. And I can't deny that. And, I, you know, I feel like different personalities, different strokes for different folks. My, my personality is definitely an educator. I'm an educator from, from within. But being a stay-at-home mom, sometimes life can get kind of mundane. Just having a child who both of my children love learning. And they just show me how to use my talents better because I see their talents and I see what they make around the house, what they do, and it makes me want to be a better keeper of my talents. I have become a better mom and a better person overall because, because of them and because of these unique experiences that we've had to learn as a family. And, you know, I'm a wife, and so for me to be a wife, a lot of time with some of, you'll read some stories on my blog from 30 for Sickle Cell, and one of the parents talks about how her relationship was so challenged by her child having sickle cell that it ended her marriage. What I understand and I don't take for granted is that when you have a child with special needs, whatever the challenge that they may be facing is, you need a support system. And so if you don't have a spouse who is supportive, you need to create a community of support. That could be a church, it could be your neighbors, it could be a school group, it could be anybody else that's willing to help you, but you do have to have a support group in order to make it because in this world, we're not islands. We actually need other people. So I'm an introvert, <laughs> which may shock some people, but I, I am an introvert. And so by putting myself out there, I have to be willing to allow people to support me. And that can be hard, but you do need support. And that's one of the greatest lessons that I've learned about having a child with special needs. Allow others who love you to support you. It can be hard on marriages. For I'm fortunate that I have a husband who's willing to, under, to be understanding. He's willing to provide so that I can be a stay-at-home mom, so that I can you know, have my blog and pursue the things that are my interests. It's a team effort, not just given by myself. When you see posts on my blog, it's a team effort from my whole family because we've all sacrificed to share this information with everyone else. Thank you so much. Is there anything else that you'd like to add, fellow introvert? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to add that in October, the Sickle Cell Disease Association is having a conference, and the Ruby Ball is one of the organizations that I am partnering with to advocate for. It's actually founded by a young woman who has sickle cell, and she wanted to give back to the community, and so they have a gala where they raise money for the Sickle Cell Disease of Association and for people who have sickle cell disease. And so I will be partnering with them. You'll start seeing PSAs on my blog and on my social media channels about the partnership. The gala is going to be October 13th, I believe. I would love for you to join us to buy a ticket, support the cause, and make a difference in your community and just raise awareness where you can. There is a large population of people of Latin American descent who have sickle cell. And so I want to start, you know, advocating for that group as well because we have to help each other out. And by doing so, we have to speak about it. Don't be ashamed of it. Speak about it. And by information, our lives can be changed. Definitely visit my blog, cleverlychanging.com. And also... Follow me on my social channels at Cleverly Changing. On Twitter, I'm at Cleverly Changing. So that's C L E V E R L Y C H A N G I N. I look forward to connecting with you in the future. Definitely visit me on Instagram, especially if you're interested in homeschooling type of stuff. I share a lot of my homeschooling and what we do, the activities, because I want my daughter to have a full life. So we go a lot of places. We do a lot of things. And if that sort of thing interests you, definitely follow me on Instagram at Cleverly Changing. 
That's L. Cole, writer and founder of CleverlyChanging.com. Now, if you didn't catch all of her social media information, no worries. We'll have it on PlanetNow.com. You can also look under the podcast tab and click podcast episodes. You can find several informational links about sickle cell disease and the trait, ones mentioned in this episode, and some others that weren't, but they will be in there for your information as well. Thanks again for listening to Planet Now. It's much appreciated. And if you do me a huge, huge favor, please Please follow Planet Noun on SoundCloud. You can also go to Planet Noun on Apple Podcasts and rate and review the show. Those links also at planetnoun.com. And hey, if you have interview ideas or questions, drop me an email, planetnoun at gmail.com. You can also message me on Facebook or Instagram. Thanks again for stopping by. Until next time, take care. Yeah.